it's interesting. I, I I was in Des Moines or no Charleston. It was, I was I was in Charleston right before the primaries or during the primaries, uh, and went to a Buttigieg rally uh, and then a Biden rally and a Warren event um, uh, and a Klobuchar event. I believe uh, I got to see them all. It's it's really fascinating bouncing around. Uh, and I saw, I went to the Buttigieg rally and it was really beautifully put together. People were excited. I sort of, I felt like the energy at a Buttigieg rally was uh, all the volunteers all felt like the, the smart kids from high school who like put together all of the after school programs. Like it was, everybody was like well put together. It felt like you were walking into an after school event run by a, the <laughs> seniors who like don't drink and are all, all just really going to make this thing sing. No, no offense. No offense. You, you got you got most of that right. Okay, you, you got a lot of that right. We we all had strong, you know, type A valedictorian energy to us, yeah. myself included. But I do drink. I want I want that to be. I nice. believe you drink. I believe I believe you're the one cool person who drinks, and everybody <laughs> else there respects the fact that you drink. That's a choice that you make, but they think it's more important to make sure that everything goes off without. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think that is a fairly spot on assessment of our campaign yes it felt i was like oh this but like young 30s put together energy who clearly like a generation of people also who are like can we handle this shit and, and put together something professional and then i walked down the street to the biden uh event and and god bless it was tough it was in a gym it was it was low energy it was uh joe was a little bit tired and it 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 it, it, it didn't look great. It didn't look great for the, the Biden campaign. But guess what? The Biden campaign wins that and, and goes off running there. And so I look at this and I, 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 I agree with you, but I wonder if the, is the system made, does the system want uh, a campaign run like uh, what Buttigieg promises or somebody who is young and with that energy? Uh, is, is, are we set up to accept that as a, a legitimate counterforce to whatever Republicans put up or or like how do we explain what happens with Biden? So it was legitimate enough for Iowans to, you know, make him to for him to win Iowa. Mm -hmm. It was legitimate enough for him to come in a bit this closest second place in New Hampshire primary history. Was it enough for him to win the presidency? No, it might have been it might have been too early. It might have um, been too much too early. Um, but I also think we have to keep in mind what the electoral environment was in 2020, which is that unlike in prior years where Democrats would say, you'd go to Democrats and you'd say, okay, what's your number one issue? And they'd say healthcare or jobs or, um, public safety. You would go to Democrats in 2019 and 2020, and I'm sure you talked to them. Their number one issue across the board was who can beat Donald Trump? That's all like that's what they cared about. And so for all those hours, all of us spent talking about you know, our various policy plans, voters, number one priority was just playing pundit, essentially. And the pundit take from voters was that the safest choice was the former two-term vice president, that he was the most comfortable candidate for them, you know, and I think someone on the Biden campaign described it like in a positive way. And I want to make clear, I'm using this in a positive way that he was sort of the comfortable old shoe in that election. Like if you're, you just wanted to slip your feet into it. And I sort of agree with that, that you knew what you were getting into with Joe Biden. And, um, you know, he had been senator for so long. He had been a uh, eight year vice president and there was a comfort factor with him and Democrats wanted that comfort factor and he delivered, he won. And I think he was probably the best candidate we could have put up that year. And I'm saying that knowing that I work for Pete Buttigieg. So that electoral environment was very unique in that sense. Um, and we have to sort of take it year by year, election cycle by election cycle, because, you know, 2024, 2028 could be completely different, um, completely different environments. And I hope we get back to a, a place where it's not just about, wow, we have to stop this existential threat in the Republican Party from winning again and make it more about 
like the stuff we were talking about before the American people and less about these personalities that, um, you know, unfortunately dominate our politics sometimes. If, if Trump runs again, is that just the same election all over again? I mean, it, it seems like I, I would say yeah. in some ways it's a gift to the, the Democrats is it's, it's an yeah. issue to know how to run on and gets people out to vote. I think it is the same election all over again. Um, and man, it, it makes me feel really bad for people who are going to be turning 18 that year. And that's their first election. Like, because one, I'm voting for Joe Biden is going to be great for re- re-election. I'm excited to vote for Joe Biden for re-election. He you, hope really he run, proved- you hope he runs again or would you? Yeah, yeah I, I, absolutely, I absolutely think he should. And I mean, after the last two weeks that he's had, the... I, I I would like the media to stop asking that question of Democrats. And I understand that Democrats have given some fodder for that question, right? Um, by saying, oh, you know, I'm not going to get to that question right now or whatever. And like, if you are a Senate candidate in a red state running right now, the last thing you need to be doing is talking about any national Democrat, not named like Joe Manchin. If you're running in a red state, tie yourself to Joe Manchin, just like, hug him to death but no you don't want to talk about any other national democrats so i understand that but like the media's obsession with this question how many times do they have to ask me this like why does anyone even care do they think i'm like i'm like texting with joe biden being like hey joe any word on 2024 no i have no like inside insight onto this i have the same insight as everyone else and i do think he should run but i think that like for the sake of you know eight future 18 year olds, I really hope Donald Trump doesn't run because it would be nice to have a more dynamic election and not just have a, you know, a redo of 2020. And I think it would be nice for really everyone if we could sort of turn the page on Donald Trump because he, to my mind, has brought out the worst in American politics and the worst in the American people. I I think the media keeps asking that question, especially on the left. I do think age is a real issue and we don't want to be ageist within this, but it, it's, it's, it's no big secret. We look to the people in power and they're all, they're all way up there uh, and have a hard time talking about important things like technology or what the world's going to look like. <laughs> I feel like progressives have a hard time asking the question because of fears of ageism of, is he too old? And so the nice way of saying it, I think it's, it's progressive quote code in the media of, do you think he should run again to be like, dear Lord, are we going to have an 80 year old in office right now? Come on, everybody. There's got to be a 35 year old out there who's really who knows how to use an iPhone, who can speak coherently. Let's have let, let's really look closely at that. So I like so I get that. I get that it is about getting at the age question, but like. I worked on the Obama campaign in 2012. I was the director of rapid response. And were these like reporters in a coma in 2020, in 2012? Like, how did they think Joe Biden talked back then? He, he would always mix up what state he was in. He would always, that's part of his appeal is like the uncle Joe thing. He's not the slickest guy on the block. He's not the, the guy with the silver tongue. Um, And I think most people identify with that because most people aren't like, don't speak in perfect sound bites. Most people don't speak like Pete Buttigieg. And I consider myself more in the Joe Biden camp than in the Pete Buttigieg camp. Like, I don't want to go on TV all the time and have to deliver perfectly crafted sound bites. Like, that's not my thing. Um, And I think for most people, it's not. So I think Joe Biden has never been that way. And I think when people try to use his verbal slip ups as proof that he's got like secret dementia, that it is overlooks the fact that this is been like who he has been his entire public career but two like why should age matter you should age should matter because then it would impact job performance but let's look at the last few weeks even while having covid he has been able to lead the democratic party in achieving all these you know legislative wins um in terms of sorry i just think of bug flew into my eye um legislative wins with you know the PAC act with the infra with the inflation reduction act that one always gets me because ira stands for like so many different things but Mm -hmm. um but with the pact with ira um with killing the leader of al-qaeda 
Um, and you can't tell me that be just because he's 76 years old that he shouldn't be president because if if what matters is actually your job performance and not the superficial stuff, his job performance has been pretty lights out and impressive the last few weeks. Yeah. I mean, I, I do wonder if, if what matters is the superficial stuff in some ways, right? How, how, how are, if, if we look, actually, if we look back, I want to, if we loop it around to you, correct me if I'm wrong, you, you fell in love with politics early on watching the war room, the, yeah. the world around politics. And in your book, you describe your first love as John Edwards. Your first political oh. political love is John Edwards. But part of the way you talk about him was the, the charisma and the vibe around somebody like that. And so you look back at what you, a politically active uh, college student, saw in a, a politician back then. What do you think uh, young college students are going to fall in love with in the next few years? I... Oh. I sometimes think that we view young people as this monolith, right? That like, oh, all people under the age of, you know, 22 or under the age of 25 think the same um, or both the same. And I know that, sure, there are some candidates that get them going more than others. Um, and that Joe Biden wasn't ex necessarily a candidate that you associated with like energizing youth voters. Um, but what we have seen youth voters really care about is one, how we've recovered from the pandemic. Um, because like, if you're 21 years old, that's like a lot of time of your life that was robbed from you. Um, you know, the two plus years that we all essentially had to stay indoors. And so the pandemic and the recovery from it, the economic recovery from it, but also like the social recovery from it, the mental health recovery from it, I think it's going to be a really, really important issue for young voters. Um, and making sure that there is um, like a job market for them to go out to, a housing market where they can buy homes. I think the economy really is going to be the motivating issue. Um, and the fallout from COVID is probably going to animate what um, younger voters care about. But the thing about the fallout from COVID is that it's all, we're only beginning to see it. I the long term effects of, of this are are just going to be enormous in impact and frankly tragic in terms of educational impact, mental health impact, economic impact, social impact, all of that. So um, that's sort of a depressing answer, but I do think that a lot of that is going to motivate how voters, how younger voters vote, and it's the candidate who can imagine a better future for them, one where they see life like actually being pleasant and um, life actually being one where they can make a good living, buy a good house, raise a family, not have to turn on cable news and have a panic attack every day. Um, and how that it looks more specifically, I'm not gonna, we won't know until a year, two years from now.